the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They are yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us join our hearts in prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Holy and eternal God, in your mystery and majesty and glory and love, you have revealed your own heart to us in Jesus. So open our hearts, Lord, to receive, to know, and to glorify you. Help us in our faith to grow deep in love with you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, during this time of pandemic, when most of us have been spending a lot more time at home, I must confess that Corinne and I have been watching some TV. We do our work during the day, but in the evening we find ourselves turning the TV on and watching mindless sorts of things. But one of the things that we've kind of gotten hooked on is Hogan's Heroes. Neither of us are old enough to have remembered it when we were children watching it. That was an adult show, so we weren't watching that show. But boy, are we enjoying it now. And because we've been kind of watching a lot of it, we've kind of started to, to learn more about the folks that were in it. For example, the guy who plays Colonel Clink is a Jewish man who survived the Holocaust. He took the role as long as he was allowed to play the German officer as a buffoon. Isn't that awesome? There are a number of Jewish men who were characters in this, who played these roles as a comedy, making fun at those who had caused them such, such pain. But the main character is Hogan, and Boy, just watching the show, you, you start to get this idea about what he's like, and you make that correlation that you somehow know him. Well, I don't know Hogan very well. I remember in 1978 visiting at my grandmother's house, 
And the news that the adults were talking about was that Bob Crane, that's the actor who played Hogan, had been murdered. Didn't think anything of it for many years, but now that we've started watching the show, and whereas from what little I know, I sense what type of person he is, I went and Googled and looked up Bob Crane and found out he had a really um, sordid sort of life. I really didn't know him at all. Sometimes we assume we know people, people who are public images. We only know what they show us. To know somebody, really to know them, is to delve much deeper into a relationship, deeper into a sense of trust and sharing and honesty. In the Gospel reading that we just heard, this is a continuation of the farewell discourse. This is the high priestly prayer. That's what scholars call this part of it. Jesus is praying to His Father. And so we're getting to listen in as Jesus is praying. And the first part, He's praying specifically to the Father about His relationship with the Father and with these people who He's been discipling. And He talks about eternal life. And He says that eternal life is to know God. Wow. In the Gospel of John, that sense of knowing, the wor Greek word there, is used by the Gospel writer to mean relationship. To be in relationship with God. And we're not talking superficial, we're talking that deep dive that deep dive into the core of who one another is, in that deep relationship with God, is eternal life. Living each and every day in that deep connectedness. Jesus is the one who's shown us this. Jesus has revealed the Father to us. Jesus has shown us the very heart of God. So think about that knowing God. Look at what Jesus has shown. In the Gospel of John, his first miracle is when he turns water into wine at a wedding celebration, showing the abundance of God. Here this young couple's getting married and the wine's running out. Jesus shows God's joy for human life, creating the best wine. Or the woman at the well who's living a life in disgrace and in brokenness and in shame who Jesus reveals the very heart of love to, the heart of mercy and forgiveness and compassion, and she runs to tell others. Or how about all the stories that we have of his healing people like lepers, lepers who are pushed to the edge of society, who are written off, who are looked away from, Yet Jesus heals and restores those who are possessed of demons or who are caught in some form of mental illness, and Jesus brings healing to restore them. The man that was born blind, that he gives sight to, welcoming him into the richness and a fuller life. In this Jesus, we see the heart of God. We know what God is like. We know who God is, and we know that God sees into the depths of our being, even our being below the surface, the being that doesn't always have good thoughts, the being that isn't perfect, but is flawed and broken and struggling, that God sees there with love, and forgiveness and compassion and mercy. This is eternal life, to be known for who we are and to know this God that accepts us and forgives us 
and finds joy in us. Who chooses to find joy in us? This is eternal life. And brothers and sisters, that eternal life is now. It's not someday in the future in the sweet by and by. It's already begun now. We know eternal life through Jesus. But there's more. Because then Jesus in His prayer is talking about glorifying God. And again, this is one of those Gospel of John things. When John talks of glorifying God, what he's talking about is God being revealed in the present moment. Jesus has done just that. He has glorified His Father by revealing God in the present moment. By pointing others to God. And brothers and sisters, as those who have seen the heart of God in Jesus, <coughs> as those who have eternal life, our life role now is to glorify God and that is to point out to others where God is present here and now. But for us to do that, for us to live that, is a call to have a change of our hearts and minds. It is a call for us to live a life of repentance, of turning away from our sinful nature because our human sinful nature so often tries to exclude, to push away, to judge, to seek greed. Many of the problems we face in our society today are just a matter of follow the money. Follow the money trails. Who's making the money? Folks, God is the owner and giver of all that exists in its abundance. It's just some of our brothers and sisters choose to be greedy and hoarders. You see, it takes a change of mind and a change of heart to actually live into this eternal life, trusting Jesus and acting as Jesus. Think about how are you showing compassion and mercy and forgiveness and grace? How are you doing the works of Jesus in your life now? You see, that early group of disciples, they gathered around this Jesus. They didn't understand it all. They couldn't write out giant volumes of theology. They couldn't even quote Scripture. They simply trusted in this Jesus who showed them God and then filled with the Spirit of Jesus as Jesus did not leave them alone. They formed a community. They gathered around word and sacrament. They gathered around the promises of this Jesus. They prayed together. They shared together. They lived together. They lived in a community. And as a community, they reflected Jesus to one another and they reflected Jesus to the world. Later in this high priestly prayer, Jesus prays that as He and the Father are one, so too we may be one. For our calling as the church is to be reflecting Jesus into the world, to be pointing others to this Jesus, to be pointing others to this God. How are you living that out? How are you living that out with your checkbook? How are you living that out with your time? How are you living that out with the relationships you've been provided? How are you living eternal life now? How are you living knowing God? And how are you glorifying God? I saw a meme and it was something to the effect of it doesn't matter if you can quote Scripture to the end of the day if you act as though you've never opened the Bible. See, it's getting past the superficial. God doesn't care about the superficial. He's way past that. He goes to the deep. And God is calling us 
into that true source of eternal life of knowing God and then living it. How are you doing with that? Amen. At this time, we'd normally be receiving the offering, and we want to thank you for your support. Through this time of pandemic, as things have been very different and hard, you have been helping us and helping the church to continue its ministry. We cannot thank you enough, yet we still need your continuing support. You'll see on the screen that you can give by mailing in your offering, by using the online giving um, button that is on the website, or you can go to your own bank or credit union and use the bill pay service to forward your offering to the church. We thank you for your support.